All right, guys, this is Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography coming at you with another tutorial. Today, we've got a couple of questions about the Microsoft Surface Pro 3. And that's what we're going to talk about. Before we do that, I'd like to kind of point out that my videography today is being augmented by the Sony Action Cams. Here we have the AZ-1 and this cam right here. The main cam that you see me is actually the AS-200V. The audio that you hear is going to be from both of these, depending on which one, and I'm actually recording a separate track of audio just in case I don't like the audio from these guys on my Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge. And helping me monitor everything is going to be the handy dandy live view remote for both action cams. Popped up on a Joby Gorillapod on each one of them and SanDisk Platinum or Silver memory cards. Note about this, in order to record in the X AVCS codec, you need a class uh, 1 UHS or higher SD card. I bought those, or at least I thought I did, uh, as far as the Samsung was concerned. But in the Sony action cams, the one that I purchased, they were about $30 each SD card um, for 16 gig. Uh, said it's 45, 50 megabytes a second. Doesn't do it. So next time, I'll go with my old standard P and Ys. They're a little bit more expensive, but I know I'll get a 95 megabyte throughput, and that's what we're going to go with. So let's go ahead and talk about the Surface Pro 3. The biggest question that I've received so far has actually been, you know, hey, uh, you know, you, you know, actually it's been a couple of them. The first one is, um, what version of Lightroom are you using? The second one is, you know, you recommend the uh, i5 version but you're using the i7 version what's the big difference and what am I gonna what kind of performances am I going to see and the last one is you know what is the battery life uh, like on this device when doing intensive applications so let's start off by doing one other thing uh, I've got my handy dandy Surface Pro 3 right here and you can see it's got the type cover on it now I never really intended to purchase the type cover uh, I got it at Best Buy. It was an open box buy for the type cover in red. Regularly $130. I got it for $100. I had $45 or $40 in um, Best Buy Resort Reward Zone certificates. So for basically $60, I got the type cover. Um, that's a more reasonable price to pay for one, you know, about $60. And Microsoft really needs to do some thoughts on that. I mean, I don't think that the type cover should actually come with this surface. It's a, uh, that's a different, um, tell me one particular um, device or tablet that actually comes with a, uh, a type cover or a key cover or anything like that. No, none of them do. So this is straddling the line between uh, Ultrabook and tablet and, you know, as, a, as the ultimate convertible hybrid. Yeah, I get that. But... Anyways, no matter what, 130 bucks is just too much to pay for a stupid type cover. And I got some gripes with that. First of all, it sucks. This trackpad sucks. It's nowhere near precision enough. So when you're scrolling around and you lift your finger off and place your finger on to tap, let's say you move over to put your mouse on top of something and then you go to tap, well that causes it to move. So it's, it's just not precision enough. You can then scroll down its sensitivity so that it's a snail's pace and you got to scroll three or four times just to get your mouse from one side of the screen to the other. But I digress. Anyways, typing experience though is excellent, but the, uh, the whole cover right there, I don't like it. So, I guess the first question that uh, we can kind of get into here is, um, well, actually, I'll, I'll get into it, is battery life. You know, what is the battery life like? Uh, for me, battery life on this model, and remember, I tested all three, or I tested three models. I tested the i5, 4 gigabytes of RAM with 128 gigabytes of storage. I tested the i5. Uh, with 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, and I tested, of course, the i5 with, or the i7 with 8 gigabytes of RAM and uh, 256 gigabytes of storage. Now, the fastest out of all of them by far is the i7 with the 8 gigs of RAM and the 256. I'm not sure that the, you know, the 512 hard drive would be any faster than the 256 gigabyte hard drive. But, of course, you've got more processing power. You've got a uh, higher uh, threading rate going on or hyper-threading or overclocking, whatever you want to call it, going on with, um, uh, you know, the i7 processor. So it's not a, it's not a mobile processor. It's a, it's a true uh, dual-core uh, i5 or i7. Each core has two logical threads, so it's four logical threads 
Uh, still doesn't make up for true quad core, but does a very good job. And um, as far as it's concerned, I like it. So uh, what kind of performance am I getting out of here? I'm getting, um, not performance, battery life. I'm getting roughly, if I want to use Photoshop or Lightroom, for say, like right here, and I want to export photos, I can work in Lightroom, unplug from the charger, and work for about three hours, three hours and 15 minutes before I hit that 7% warning. And that's if I've got my brightness uh, right around, uh, you know, I'd say I'm a 100% brightness kind of guy, so I don't ever throttle my brightness. I don't really look at that. But, you know, usually at a coffee shop, I might be 75% or more if I'm trying to extend it. But I can get about, uh, about four, three hours of solid usage uh, at a coffee shop. And that includes doing things like publishing to a gallery while editing another gallery worth of photos and uh, trying to export uh, or put together a slideshow with the slideshow module, which actually works pretty well. Um, there we go. So, and that's the type of usage that I'm working. So I'm, I'm running it pretty good and hard. If I'm just doing some kind of light editing in Lightroom and I'm just, you know, more casually looking at my photos and more casually editing stuff and I'm not really trying to be as productive and get that stuff out there, then I, I definitely feel I can get uh, a longer. In fact, my full day's worth of use, I figure I get a full day, about seven hours of battery time on this. You figure I'll leave my house at 10, I might get back at 10, that's 12 hours. Um, there's about four hours where I don't use it, so there's around eight hours, and in between on those eight-hour time period, you know, I might be drinking a cup of coffee, doing something at the uh, coffee house, meeting with a client, going through and showing something, and then uh, moving on over to, I mean, who knows, whatever you're going to do, but have some Google Chrome tabs open and have uh, working in Excel or working in uh, Word or sending some emails and stuff like that. Um, when you look, uh, this is... The type cover was on, there's something else. When you have the type cover attached and then you take it off, it tells Lightroom to do something different. It puts it in a slightly different touch mode and then it actually makes it quite a bit more difficult for me to touch these little icons. Um, you can see right here in an exported slideshow, it does a pretty good job. We're gonna go ahead and make it a very um, large screen. So there's a uh, hundred and something photos in here and there you go. And you can see as the, uh, the slideshow begins to play, uh, so I can do stuff like that, which is pretty nice. Of course, there are other quality settings that you can set. The second thing that we'll kind of talk about today is, you know, what, what do you recommend? Why do I recommend the i5 version over the i7 version? Basically, it has to do with performance. So the i7 version uh, is the fastest, but the i5 version with 8 gigabytes of RAM was remarkably faster doing things in Photoshop and Lightroom than the i5 version with 4 gigabytes of RAM. I did not bother with the i3 version. I just got right into the i5. I didn't want the i3, and I, I got I picked it up at Best Buy when you could get the i5, four gigs, one twenty-eight for around nine hundred bucks, ra rather than a thousand that it usually is. And when I was using it, it worked well. Actually, the i5 with four gigs of RAM would do what I wanted it to do in Lightroom, and didn't give me a hard time. If I really want a lot of processing power, I'll just open up a MacBook with the Retina display, and, and you know I've got that thing maxed out, so. If I'm worried about that, then that's what I'll do. But for casually editing photos, or even hardcore editing photos, but at the uh, at um, at Starbucks or someplace, or with a client, and we can both sit down and look at this was this is a great device for that. Or hey, I use this device to run a photo booth while I'm at a wedding, and that is awesome because while I'm taking photos, I can tether my camera to it. The pictures are popping up there, then the pictures are printing off automatically you know and then people are seeing that it's it's really quite amazing so it's allowed me to be really productive uh, so that's another reason I like it I absolutely love this device okay the other thing that we talk about is um, when when you actually get to it the i7 compared to the i5 version we're talking both with 120 uh, excuse me 256 gigabyte hard drive and 8 gigs of RAM because the processor runs faster when it needs to it actually has about an hour shorter battery life so on the i5 um, uh, 256 and 8, I was getting about four hours of heavy-duty Lightroom use. Um, so there's something to consider. I was also getting, I thought, around seven to eight hours of all-day use rather than six to seven hours, closer to seven hours uh, on the i7 model. Uh, and so when you think about it, the pricing difference, gosh, you could buy an HP Spectre for uh, less money than this. You could buy the MacBook Air 13-inch for 
less money than this, especially if you factor in $130 for a doggone uh, type cover. Good Lord. So my point is, for most people, the i5, 8 gigs of RAM, will probably be the sweet spot. You know, They'll probably enjoy that and see the most benefit out of it. That's, uh, that's my point there. So that's what actually that's that's pretty much it. I think we've talked about all three, all two of uh, of the questions right now. Um, hey, look once again. I hope that you found this helpful. This is what I use. I absolutely love it. It's uh, become a daily driver for me. The Mac is sat home and it allows it to sit and just kind of clunk here rather than carrying it around. Believe it or not, the difference in size is amazing. The screen resolution they're both around 216 or 220 pixels per inch. So the um, the ability to have a high quality display with pin input to edit in my hands while I'm drinking up a cup of coffee, hand it over to a guest to show them is great. This is a 95% Adobe RGB. This is 100% Adobe RGB. What I have found, what's 5%? It's absolutely nothing. Uh, so my prints, especially through soft proofing, I never have a problem or any gamut warnings being able to show the actual colors on my display of the screen, which is great. What you would find is on some printers when you're using soft proofing in Lightroom, it will show you that there could be a gamut issue with the print, um, the printer media that you're using if you don't have the right profile installed, which is great because if you think you would ever try to do that on any other tablet, a Galaxy Tab or something like that, even with a beautiful bright Super AMOLED display, they just don't have the color gamut. So Microsoft stepping it up and making sure that this screen is a 95% or more Adobe RGB has really brought the Surface Pro 3 into the forefront as far as a, a tablet. It's great to use. Fan noise. There is a lot of fan noise out of this one because it runs hotter. There's more fan noise. The fan noise is light, but when you're used to something like uh, the Mac, um, it's definitely less. When this fan gets going over here on my MacBook Pro with the Retina display, uh, you can really hear it. It can when it's when it's exporting and doing stuff. It's really loud. This one is probably about half as loud as that one, uh, but either way, it doesn't particularly bug me. Once again, I'm Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography. Catch me over on Twitter at Rob Ham Photo. You can find me both on Facebook and YouTube at forward slash Robert Ham Photography. And uh, let me know what you think. Are you using the Microsoft Surface Pro? Are you thinking to get into it? Would you like some more reviews about these action cams? Would you like to know how you can use the Live View remote, set up your action cams, and do multi-cam angle editing on the fly? And uh, I, I don't know, I think it's really cool, but let me know what you think. And as always, catch you on the flip side.